can see called holistic <coughs> synchronization of state between independent nodes. Sounds really fancy. Um, it's it's really just a story. It's it's more or less a day at the office. So I work for Soundrop, where uh, we're doing music plus real time. Um, social experiences on Spotify, Deezer, and the web. At least that's our like customer-facing product. And uh, we also do artist events. So this is what you'll see if you, if you install our Spotify app. It's basically people listening to music together. You can vote for tracks, add tracks. Community forms around different rooms. <coughs> and uh, we do artist events. So labels come to us because they have their new artist coming out with a new album and they want to promote it and they want Spotify followers. And uh, so this is, this is uh, written in JavaScript, this, this uh, Spotify app. Our backends are written in Erlang. I'm, I'm, I'm Erlang, by the way, I should say. My name's Erlang Hamburg. Yes, I write Erlang. Sorry. And uh, for some reason, people I meet at programming conferences remember my name now. Uh, So this is, uh, this is a story about how basically looking more closely at a problem can lead to a super solution. Um, I will approach this with a story, but, um, but the solution should be more broadly applicable. Okay, so as I mentioned, we focus on these uh, real-time social experiences where people interact, listen to music, um, chat, and uh, I mean, the most obvious way to, to, to get to this is, is by having a chat room. I mean, we all want chat rooms, and uh, well, as, as we heard uh, Joe say this morning, there's, there's a lot of money in, in chat app, so let's build one. So let, we're, we're going to focus on chat. Uh, a chat is a bit of a naked experience on its own, but we'll probably have more on. This was actually us uh, developing a new product, um, probably for the web earlier. But um, <coughs> let's focus on chat. So just, just so we're on the same page, I mean, chat is really s simple. There's a list of people. There's a linear history of messages. Um, you see everyone else's messages in near real time, and uh, messages are tied with a sender. So I think this is more or less what we all would uh, agree constitutes chat, at least a very basic chat. So let's build it. Easy. I mean, Erlang was made for building chat apps, or not really, but. <laughs> Well, it, it, it makes it really easy. So uh, what we're, where we want to go is having a client, let's say a web browser, connect to this, this room, subscribe to the room, and uh, basically signaling, uh, I want to receive chat messages. I want to send chat messages. And uh, from that point on, we'll send uh, the messages everyone writes to this client, and the client can send messages to the chat. Easy. Let's scale it. Okay, so we have our simple chat server, and for reliability and scaling purposes, we'll have several nodes. So, uh, especially rel reliability here, uh, we don't want our single point of failures, we want clients uh, distributed among different nodes. <coughs> um, and it, it must be said, scaling chat is not a technical problem. Your worst implementation <laughs> I mean, well, uh, I mean, people will fail before the tech. Uh, you don't really want to see a million messages scrolling past. Uh, so, if anyone has any really good ideas about how you actually solve the social problem, talk to me. Um, but yeah, just have to be said. So, I mean, okay, we're focusing on chat, and uh, but let's pretend we have more around it. So, why do we need to scale it? I mean, or have several nodes? Well. I, c I can show you what a bad day at the office looks like. It's looked like this. So we're having an artist event, and we love you, Demi is very upset because Soundrop just crashed, and she's not happy at all. Ouch. 
I'm crying. Um, so, I mean, this is what happens when uh, you try to orchestrate lots of chat and uh, playback synchronization, and voting, and everything, and you underestimate how popular an artist is. None of us have heard about Demi Lovato. She's huge. So, okay, let, let, let's uh, have some redundancy and then have three notes to begin with. So, here let's pretend there are lots of clients connected to, to node one, node two, and node three, and the node themselves uh, exchange messages. So someone sent a message connected to node one saying uh, ASL and that message is now being sent out to the other nodes so they can again distribute them to the other clients. And I mean al already at this point you can come up with questions like well what if anyone connected to node three sends a message at the same time should we make make sure these are synchronized and you could but this is chat. It, it really doesn't matter if, if two people send the same message, same second, or same millisecond. It really doesn't matter. Uh, and this is a luxury we're going to use. Um, this, this makes the problem much easier, actually. So, all well and good. Our system is up and running. People are happily chatting away. Um, but one node crashes or someone trips over the network wire, or and the, the cable is, is destroyed. Uh, the node comes up again, but did we lose any, any uh, chat events while it was down? We probably did. So we need to talk to the other nodes and, and uh, uh, reconstruct this history of, uh, I mean, we have a global history representing this chat, so we have to reconstruct it. So, I mean, and all of this will also apply to a newly started node. So, our chat is super popular, we start a new node, it doesn't have the history. So, node 2 is down for some reason. The other nodes are happily exchanging messages saying, what's the global state? Uh, basically, so any, any new client can get the history. If you scroll up the chat, you should be able to, to have the old events. So, it, it's, uh, it's nice to have this consistent history. Node 2 comes, well, comes back up and, whoa, maybe I'm out of date. Here it is. It, it is. Basically, lost a bunch of messages. So, synchronizing this uh, is, I mean, it, it, it's really a solved problem. There are ways to achieve this where, where it's really important that the history is eventually consistent. Um, however, as I alluded to before, uh, our problem is actually kind of easier. It, it's it's chat. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> if if uh, if two messages are are mixed in order on on one of the client, it doesn't really matter. And also, you log into the chat, you scroll back, you look through history. We can even tolerate a very like small chance of a message not being there. It, it's okay. It, again, it's, it's chat. So the idea is basically by maintaining a hash per node that represent all the events it has received, it's possible to discover that we're out of sync in a really cheap fashion by simply setting this hash. And all of you are thinking this, yes, this is, uh, this is a place for a bloom filter. And in case anyone doesn't know about bloom filters. It's, uh, it's one of those nice ideas you can explain really easily. It basically represents a set. Um, you have an array of m bits, initially all set to zero, and a collection of independent hash function. And for every event, message, whatever you, you have in your set, you use those has hash messages. Um, they all have range to zero to m exclusive. So you you've basically set the bits corresponding to, to to the message. So we start with our with our empty bloom filter. We get a message from Alex saying hi at time seventeen oh eight fifty three. We hash this message using three hash hash messages, getting nine, two, and three, and we just set those index to one, the, those indices to one. And continuing from from previous, we have you have the current uh, filter bloom filter on top. New message, 
the hashes produce uh, 0, 8, and 2, so we set those index indices. And you'll notice that index 2 is already set. So uh, this means that, well, actually, let's, let's skip ahead a bit. I mean, so to, ch to check then in, uh, if, if an element is in the set, we just check if all the bits at the position returned by the hash functions are set. That means, uh, I mean, this means we're going to assume it's in the set. Um, even though we're wrong with some probability, because as you, as you saw before, uh, the index 2 is already set, and of course all the indices could have been set before. So, okay. And basically we can, uh, we can see false positives. So we, we can say this message is in the set, well, when it's not, we'll never say that it's, it's, it's uh, when we say it's not in the set, it's, it's not. Um, and, and this, this uh, formula for the probability of, uh, of a false positive, I mean, w what I'm really trying to show is that by, by, by tuning the size of the filter and, and the uh, number of, uh, of hash functions, you can control this. So we can say that for a chat, we can tolerate a probability of one to <coughs> one million that a message Will, will be gone the, in between two nodes syncing. Or we can decide that note this, that's too high for probability. probability. We'll use larger filters. Or you can basically tune it. OK, so <coughs> continuing, nodes that receive this bit string can compare it against their own current Bloom filter and see if they're the same, uh, which means that they share the same history probably. And if cases where they do not match, we can use the Bloom filter as a filter. So we'll, uh, we'll have the Bloom filter the other node sent us, and we'll just go through all our, our events and basically see, is this in the filter? Is this in the filter? And basically, this, this lets us only send those, uh, those events uh, that the, the other node does not have. So. Uh, we, we're sure that the other node does not have those events, but of course we could miss someone by, by, by going through and like, yeah, this is in the set. Well, it actually wasn't. This is uh, our false, uh, yeah, I mean, th this is the probability we, we decided before, basically. So, um, I, should, I should also say that, I mean, this was uh, my, my colleague, uh, Alisa Bill in Soundrops, like, he just had this idea while we're sitting here, right? It's, it's why they use this. Is, I mean, it, it's it's one of those solutions. Like, yeah, that makes a lot of sense. It, it's, it's almost obvious once you hear it. And um, to show that this is not just vaporware, I'm actually going to show some code. So uh, this is um, from our our chat log uh, synchronization thingy where. Basically, uh, whenever there's a new peer in our in our network, when when uh, so we, we get peers, it's current peers, and basically when we have new peers, we're going to to sync those peers uh, by by uh, by sending sending our our uh, current Bloom filter, and uh, this. Uh, so this is actually what happens. So sync entries is, is, a, is a normal function. And if you see the very top uh, clause, it's basically if the filter we received from the other represented by PID is the same as our filter, fine. We, we'll just do, do nothing. If, uh, if that's not the case, we're going to use, so we use uh, level DB. So we have a E level DB full, which basically means go through all our messages or um, events or whatever, and is this uh, is this a key an element of, of our Bloom filter? If that's the case, we ignore that message. If it's not, we we uh, accumulate it. We basically add it to to uh, to send list, and uh, there is this uh, sync block size, which is just an optimization really. So when we hit that size, we're going to send all those messages off to the other node. So what this really means is that your node wakes up, it's uh, confused, 
and doesn't know if it has all the messages, asks another node, which could also be newly started and lost the messages, and will sync up, uh, but eventually we, we will uh, see other peers, and uh, so we will become eventually consistent, modulo, modulo those, uh, those false positives, basically. So, and, and I mean, all of this is, is possible because we decided that, well, a chat message, an individual chat message isn't that important. Or, but, I mean, it could be useful in other places, and it's, it's also used for other things, like maybe logs, maybe, maybe you don't, maybe you have the luxury of not needing every single message for uh, a synchronized log, basically. And that was it. That was uh, a day at the Soundrop office creating the next cool chat application. Any questions? So as you're using a bloom filter, yeah. uh, we can of course saturate a bloom filter. Yes. So if that bloom filter, if you are, you know, you, you've chosen a magic number of buckets and, yeah. you're, and you're hoping to not get more data because your artist isn't too popular or whatever it is that is coming across your traffic. Because if, if, you're, if your bloom filter fit, uh, hits um, on everything, yes. then when you, go, you, when you come back up to synchronize, you're not going to send any data to anybody. Yes. So. Uh, if, if you use a naive bloom filter, you should like have an estimate, which is hopefully in like the ballpark of, of uh, what you're going to see. But I mean, consult your local bloom filter experts. There are growing. There are, there are I, I, I exactly. Know the, I know the other bloom filter. Yes, exactly. So you probably want something that grows and keeps a more or less constant probability. I okay, mean. that was going to be my next question. Yeah. Was which are you using a naive bloom filter like please. you described, or are you at least going hierarchical? And no, no, we're not. So okay. yeah, please do that. This okay. was uh, like to convey the idea. Okay. thing that I wanted to, to mention at the request of the farm conference here that uh, the, uh, the, the folks who are putting on the farm, farm conference are going to be doing a uh, evening full of live performances tonight. I figured I would mention that to folks before they ran off to lunch and met up with each other and made dinner plans and whatnot. So. Uh, if uh, anyone is interested, they will be leaving from around the registration desk at 6.40, uh, and several of the, the folks who are giving talks over at Farm will be performing uh, various forms of digital art, music, sound things. All right, that's all I have. Um, so we will meet up here after lunch, or hopefully I will see most of you.